The Cesar Chavez Acción y Compromiso Human and Civil Rights Award is presented to a nominee who follows in the exemplary footsteps of Cesar Chavez in philosophy, work, and leadership. This year's winner is our second from the state of Colorado. Hi, I'm Carrie Dahlman, president of the Colorado Education Association. As activists and union organizers, we know how hard it can be to influence public opinion, to explain why this work is so important. But our next winners hold the key. Through passion, humor, and drama, they so entertain their audiences, they don't even realize they've learned something along the way. That's the beauty of the Romero Theater Troupe. No history book tells you everything that's happened in the past. Some stories are included, many are not. For far too many of us, our history has been considered unimportant and has remained largely unrecorded, discounted, almost forgotten. But one group in Denver, Colorado, wants to change that. The Romero Theater Troupe writes and performs plays about immigrants, Denver's labor history and workers' strikes, its Japanese internment camps, and its historic police brutality. Any social justice topic that tells a story that might not otherwise ever be told. The Romero troupe calls what they do organic theater because there's no director, no budget, no sets to speak of. The group was started by James Walsh, a history and political science teacher at the University of Colorado, Denver. He used to teach with a textbook and lectures like most other teachers, but he saw how bored his students were and how uninspired he felt. So he came up with a new model, interpretation of history through dramatic theater. And his students loved it. His work in the classroom soon grew into the community and the Romero Theater Troupe was born. They started small with just seven performers, but the numbers have grown steadily and they now count over 200 people involved in the troupe. I really like how you um, stepped up to the body. Jim keeps the group organized, loosely, but everyone contributes their opinions and ideas as to how each performance is scripted and staged. I want more of the personal grief. The story that's being told is explored in depth and is felt personally by each performer. This passion is evident to all who witness their performances and has inspired many audience members to take action in their communities. One play the troupe performs tells the story of Alex Landau, an African-American college student who was the victim of police brutality. The Romero troupe gave Alex an outlet and a venue for his heartbreaking and yet all too familiar story. Many of the actors have never performed before, just as many of the audience members have never gone to the theater before. But a bond is created between them. No one leaves unchanged. And while it's been said that history is written by the victors, the work of the Romero Theater Troupe brings us a little closer to leveling the field. They called Martin Luther King a communist. They called Cesar Chavez a communist. He paused, taught me once. He said, when they call you a communist, it means you're doing something right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the Romero Theater Troupe, James Walsh. This is crazy. Yesterday, I was on a bicycle trail from Washington, D.C. to Pittsburgh. 
400 mile journey in the woods, and now here I am. It's a, it's a wonderful world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to thank uh, the NEA. Um, most of the members of the Romero Troop are educators, and this is incredibly meaningful to our community. Um, I want to thank Carrie Dahlman with the Colorado Education Association. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the uh, Political Science Department at the University of Colorado at Denver, my colleagues where I teach, for saving my career. Um, I'll explain that. And I want to thank teachers everywhere who teach with courage and boldness and creativity and passion and storytelling. Um, th this all happened when I decided not to use standard lectures and exams, threw that all out, and decided that storytelling and the arts was the way to teach history and political science. Um, <clears throat> Six years ago, I was fired for that. My students raised enough hell that the dean overruled the decision and saved my position. And the political science department two years ago said, we want you here, we know what you do and we love it. And I finally found a home in the strange world of, of higher education. Um, so, so I decided to take this to the community, not just the classroom, and I started inviting former students to get together and tell stories on stage. And, and the community grew and grew and grew, and the size of our audiences grew and grew. We don't have a budget, we don't have a director, we don't even have any theater experience. We just believe that storytelling is, is, is a direction. Storytelling is what unites us. The closest distance between people is a story. And, and th that, that is our mission. Our mission is to resurrect important stories that have been lost, stories of the labor movement, stories of human and economic justice, stories of, of uh, the struggle for social justice, stories of immigrant rights. And we bring all of these issues together, stories of the struggle against war. And we've learned that when we bring all of those issues together, when we organize across issues, it creates an incredible community. We have members of a community from all cultural backgrounds. We have members of our community between everywhere from three years old to 92. <clears throat> and <laughs> sorry, uh, and tonight. <laughs> I just want to end by saying tonight they're all here, all 100 of them. And um, Paulo Freire wrote that education is the practice of freedom. And theater is the practice of freedom. Tell your stories, stay strong, teach love.